Well, the thing that makes computers work is an operating system. Most of us are familiar with Windows and Mac. Well, another popular one out there is Linux. We've got a Linux enthusiast, Gabe, in studio today to help us understand where it all came from, kind of to get a general overview of what it's all about. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, my pleasure. So essentially, Linux is uh, an open source operating system. Yeah, so essentially that means that it's free and it's available to study, change, and use for any purpose that you like as long as you give credit. So that's called uh, something, the new project licensing system. And so where do you get Linux? Are there different versions of it? So there are a couple of commercial ones like Red Hat and Caldera, and a few of the free ones that are popular include Debian and uh, Ubuntu. And you can also get them on like CDs that'll boot directly from these CDs. They're called live CDs. So you don't have to install it on the hard drive. Exactly right. So you want to take your Windows computer and boot it into Ubuntu for an afternoon. You just take the CD and you put it in the drive. If you want to get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So for people who are using Windows or uh, the Mac OS right now, which one would you recommend for them to try out first? Uh, well, any of the ones that boot from a live CD can be a nice little adventure for, for some of these new users. Ubuntu can be pretty easy to use and tends to be distributed to people who are getting even just computers for the first time. And so th they will boot on pretty well any Intel-based or AMD-based system? Uh, they usually will, yeah. You may want to make sure that you don't have some kind of an interesting hardware configuration, but uh, again, if you boot with the CD, there's no harm in trying. So finally, let's just talk about uh, one of the other versions I'm hearing about, a mobile version of Linux. Well, there's a project called Moblin, and it's targeting um, predominantly mobile devices um, and more dedicated mobile devices, so things like smartphones and netbooks and even hardware in vehicles. You know, you look at the new netbook format, you know, the tiny laptops, and for me, that would seem like an ideal hardware device to run Linux because they're kind of lower power than most of the laptops you're seeing, yet Windows still seems to have a commanding lead even in that new space. What why do you think that is, even though Linux is free? Well, it's definitely due to the, uh, the market share of Windows. I, I, so people are more used to using Windows. Yeah. What you're seeing actually is a bit of a shift to mobile and other alternatives in these smaller netbooks because you don't need all of the features that something like a full-fledged Windows operating system offers you. You're looking to do you know, three or four specific things a lot of the time on some of those devices, though. So. so if someone wanted to find out kind of more about Linux, is there any place you'd recommend them checking out? Any of the distros that I mentioned or even just linux.org, any website that mentions the word will have a lot of information. It's very easy to find. I haven't tried it really fully yet, so I'm going to maybe get one of the CDs there and, and load it up on a laptop. Well, don't be intimidated. It's uh, not as scary as it sounds. It's Gabe, our Linux uh, enthusiast. If you want to try out uh, the Linux operating system, there's lots of great information out on the net, and uh, try it out. Can't hurt. Gotta get, gotta get, gotta get, gotta get.